The jump from the Google Pixel 5 to the Pixel 6 was a big one and we expected a lot from Google this time around with the Google Pixel 6. They took some aspects just to the moon and delivered what everyone was asking for. But there were some areas that just fell kind of flat. This was Google taking another swipe at the flagship market. So were they successful and should you get one? If you're thinking of picking this phone up in 2023, then you're in the right place. Let's talk about the Pixel 6. Now we can't talk about the Pixel 6 without addressing the huge shift in the design language. Google had lost a bit of its identity before this phone. Now we have this big bold camera visor and it's meant to define what a Pixel is from the outside. Personally, I'm not a fan of the camera visor, but it hasn't put me off using the Pixel still. I guess the benefit is that there's lots of room for the camera to grow into. As we see camera modules getting bigger and bigger, this one won't need to change much to fit more hardware in. Plus you can now spot a Google Pixel from a fair distance away with this bold one of a kind design. And I think that's the point. The more people that can identify and recognize a Google Pixel, the more people that will actually buy one. An unintentional perk of the design is that you can hold the phone really comfortably by resting your finger under the camera visor. And something I didn't know I missed from a phone is being able to put it completely flat on a table and tap on the screen without it rocking everywhere. From far away, the camera visor looks like a smooth curve, but when you take a closer look, you can see it's actually in sections and doesn't have a continuous fall over the sides. Turning the phone over, you really get a sense of the size of this thing. Say goodbye to easily one hand in your phone because this thing is massive. For someone who likes smaller phones, I found this to be huge and it only gets bigger when you slap a case on it. I think us small phone lovers have to accept that we're the minority now. We may never see anything under a 6 inch display for a Pixel again. This is a 6.4 inch 1080p 90Hz AMOLED display. And I guess most importantly, it's flat. Easier to put a screen protector on, less accidental touches, and it just makes gesture navigation so much easier. The selfie camera has moved to a center hole. It's an eight megapixel wide camera that can shoot 1080p video. If you needed 4K from the front camera, then you needed to jump up to the Pixel 6 Pro. Under the screen is an optical fingerprint sensor for unlocking the phone, not an ultrasonic one. It's faster than entering a pin, not as fast as the one we used to have on the back of the phone. I doubt we're ever going to see that again on future Pixel phones, but it is something I really miss. I'd even take a power button fingerprint sensor. For me, the main reason to get this phone is the main reason most people upgraded from the Pixel 5, the Google Tensor chip. The unknown of what doors this would open for Google was tempting enough for most people to take the leap from the Pixel 5 to the Pixel 6. The unknown is still developing, but it's a little less unknown now. It opened the doors to incorporating more AI features, longer support and better computational photography. It wasn't all good news though. It didn't benchmark as well as a flagship chip from the Snapdragon side of things. And you can definitely tell it doesn't feel as snappy as other flagships released around the same time. But it makes everything Google about this phone just more Google. And it opens the door to more features filtering down to this phone as well. Google has worked towards controlling all of its own silicon and hardware. It's still not fully Google, but we might see that in the near future. Let's move on to these back cameras. It's a dual camera setup, a wide and an ultra wide with a flash and a mic tucked into the bar as well. It's a 50 megapixel main sensor, but you can only take 12 and a half megapixel photos. And the ultra wide is a 12 megapixel camera. Google have still stuck with their heavy reliance on computational photography and the camera software, and that's a good thing. But what's even bigger is a move to better camera hardware. It's basically been the same since the Pixel 2, so it was due an upgrade. You can only do so much with software, and this combination has resulted in making the Google Pixel a photo powerhouse. I know none of you are surprised, but the Google Pixel takes great photos. It's what we've come to expect and it really doesn't disappoint. One feature I really do just want to shout out really quick is Magic Eraser. Yes, it's come down to earlier phones now, but it's amazing. The video from the back camera can go from 1080p 30 frames a second all the way up to 4K 60. If you're planning on shooting YouTube videos with this phone, then you have everything you need right here. A really versatile set of cameras. When new, this was £599, which was £250 cheaper than the Pro model. Very hard to recommend the Pro model when the standard Pixel 6 was just this good. You can now pick up one of these for less than £200 if you're checking on eBay or Facebook Marketplace. For that price, it's just too good to pass up. This one I have here is Seafoam Green, but there were two other colour options as well. Kinda Coral and Stormy Black. Kinda Coral is my favourite of these options, but this phone isn't for me, so I didn't get to choose. The black rails on these lighter colours really look good. It has 8GB of RAM and you could get 128GB or 256GB of storage. Along the bottom you can see the USB-C port with speaker grills either side. We actually have stereo speakers here with the other speaker being this tiny slit you can see across the top of the display. One area where you thought this phone might have really shone is in the battery department. 
The 4,600 milliamp hour battery mixed with the Google Tensor chip has the makings of an all day battery life. And some people will get a full day, but if you're even slightly on the side of a heavy user, you'll find yourself plugging in when you get home from work or school to get you through the rest of the day. Well, you might not actually have to plug it in because you've got wireless charging here and reverse wireless charging. The phone supports up to 30 watts charging, but don't forget, no charger in the box. The phone is fully water resistant and has an IP68 rating for dust and water. The biggest thing for this phone is that the software updates will be up to July 2025 and settle on Android 15. You'll get security updates after that up to July 2027. And that's actually great. I highly recommend this phone if you're moving from anything from a Pixel 5 or earlier. Speaking of the Pixel 5, if you're thinking of picking one of them up, then this video on screen now is a video for you. I'll see you over there.